Hello, welcome to my tutorial on the Owen Organizer Bag by Uh Oh Creations. It's a lovely bag, perfect for the beach or swimming pool even. If you lined it with waterproof fabric, you could put your beach towel and your swimming gear in there afterwards as well. Um, also for shopping, but that's what I would particularly use it for. Um, be interesting to know your uses. I hope you enjoy the tutorial and uh, here we go. So we've prepared our fabric to start with and I've cut all my pieces out and then I've interfaced them. I use um, Pellon Shape Flex SF101. I've interfaced them and then I've stitched the foam onto them, based, just basting, onto the two exterior main panels and the two exterior side panels and the exterior base which also has can't show you because stitch around but decoville um inside not decoville light but i've used decoville which is much heavier um and more solid but um so they're the exterior pieces and then we have exactly the same in the linings but obviously we only interface we don't use foam again so we have two main panels two side panels and a bottom panel and then we got um, our um, accent fabric. Well, I'm actually doing it in the lining fabric, so you can use whatever fabric you like. Our webbing, our straps and our handles, and our piece of vinyl. Now, because there's no pattern pieces for this pattern, uh, you follow the instructions um, on the tutorial, I'm not giving men, uh, mention of the sizes um, to respect Tara. If, if I give you the, the sizes, you won't need to buy the pattern. Um, so I, I'm afraid I won't be giving you any measurements. You, you'll, you'll see them in the pattern and they're dead easy to, to follow. So uh, that's that. Um, so when what you need to do is you need to interface, fuse the interface into all your pattern pieces, base the foam as I said, um, and then you're sort of ready to go. And the beauty of this is there's no hardware. So it's a very economical bag to make. Um, and uh, if you want to add pockets on the inside, you can. I'm not going to. I'm going to be stick true to the pattern. I'm not going to vary from it at all. I usually do. I usually add a slip pocket or credit card pockets, etc. But this time I thought I'm going to stick to the pattern, um, to the very letter of the pattern. Um, now, obviously, if you're doing the unlined version, you don't need to have the lining or the foam, but I I personally would do the lined version. Um, so we're going to come back in shortly and start with constructing the side panels. To start with, we want to add the side handle like I have here. So we need to get our piece of fabric, or our, sorry, our side piece, I'm turning it upside down and we measure three and a half inches down from the top. And then we want to mark two and a half inches in from each side. And obviously I'm using dissolvable uh, ink pens or the heat dissolvable um, so two and a half inches from each side so you've got two vertical lines as well so you've got the horizontal and the two vertical and we get our handle and I've put some uh, double sided tape on the ends and we place the handle with the edges of the uh, webbing on the edge of the 
side panel underneath the line so you can see the lines above and we do it with both ends and as you can see uh, the webbing's longer than the uh, fabric is which is fine because now what we need to do is take it to the machine and top stitch along there until we get to the line that we've marked then stitch down and back to the edge and then we do the same for this side as well so I shall pop and do that now so there we have it both pieces done and don't forget to just get your iron and iron the marks away so that's the two side handles done and next we're going to construct the main panels right the first thing we have to do is get our piece of vinyl fold over one of the long edges by quarter of an inch and top stitch and you can see that um, if you have um, vinyl that has say a, an embossed pattern or something or any type of pattern make sure that your fold goes over to the wrong side um, so mine's plain so there's not a wrong side or a right side and we get our um, main panel one of our main panels and we need to mark a line six and a half inches down from the top edge I've actually turned this upside down but my, mine doesn't actually matter because it's not a directional print as such well it it's as long as it's going up or down that sort of thing doesn't matter so I've drawn the line and we need to get our label holder that's what this is called and we need to place it right side down so I've got the folded edge facing up and we want to place it centrally um, so I'm just going to measure and mark a center line and yet yeah, this is six inches so I want to place it I can't mark it because it will mark and I can't get rid of it right so that's central so I've got three inches either side of the line that I've marked and we want to sew along a quarter of an inch seam allowance along there so I'm going to take that to the machine and do that so I've stitched along there and now we need to finger press it upwards and we're going to stitch it again at quarter of an inch seam allowance and then just baste the sides in place. So this is the piece added um, and now I've already done it to save faffing about but you line measure two inches from each edge and draw vertical lines and two inches from the top and draw a horizontal line and then we get one of our straps and what we're going to do is place the strap the raw edge at the bottom on the inside of the line that we've drawn so it would go like this there's the line there and then when we stitch we're going to stitch all the way up and stop at this vertical line and stitch across and come down if you want to add um, a box a stitch box um, for added strength you can or you could indeed add rivets um, and I'm sorry I forgot to say well, earlier on when I said there's no hardware there is there's the frames I completely forgot about them and I don't have them here because they're on order so um, that's why I forgot about them but yes so apologies there you do have the frames and I, I will try to remember to put a note on the screen where I said that hopefully I will <laughs> so apologies so I'm going to stitch this all the way up the edge across and then back down and we do exactly the same make sure that the strap isn't twisted and so basically it would be like that 
and again we do exactly the same lay it on the inside um, stitch up across and down um, we do exactly the same with the other piece we measure two inches from the edge draw the lines two inches from the top and do exactly what we're doing here very simple and straightforward so I'm going to stitch all this and come back to you so we've added the handles or the straps should I say and did both of them and all I did was stitch an extra line an inch down from the first line just to give it the added strength I'm not sure a rivet I've never put a rivet through webbing and I'm not sure if that would start off a horrendous fray even if you used the fray check or something so I I was sort of a bit dubious about putting a rivet in um, so yeah you may have in which case if you've tried it before that's fine I think I'll have to try it to see Okay, so the next part we're going to be doing is to construct the body. For constructing the body, we start with the exterior base and one of the main panels. And on the exterior base, mark a line three eighths of an inch in from the edge so that these are going to be our, your stitch lines. And I've also marked three eighths of an inch from the edge on this, on the main panel as well. And we place the panels together right sides together and we stitch along the line but we stop and start on the corner points we don't stitch right to the end so I'm going to attach both main panels on each side and come back so I've attached both uh, main panels and what I like to do before I stitch the side panels on um, because we've only basted the foam on, this won't be too difficult to do. But I like to remove the foam from the seam at this point um, to reduce the bulk in the seams and to help the bag sit more nice, nicely or better. Um, so I'm just snipping the ends at the moment because I had double stitched on the ba basting stitches just to hold them in place and then I just snip along using my curved scissors and as I go because the basting stitches are loose they come away really easily and I will keep doing that once I've removed from all four sections so this side and that side and the other side I will then attach the side panels in exactly the same way stopping and starting on each corner point so once I've done that I will come back and show you everything so I've attached all four panels and I've trimmed the seam allowance and now what we do is we join each side piece and we stitch from the top to the bottom to that corner point don't stitch past again that corner point at three eighths of an inch seam allowance and we do all four corners and don't forget to double stitch at the, the start and end so I shall do that and then come back and here we have the constructed outer bag um, sneak peek on the inside and I've trimmed the foam from the seam allowance as well uh, just to give a nicer finish at the end so you put that aside uh, and now if you're doing the lining we go on to the lining if you're not then you go on to the final construction section, which I'll be doing after this anyway. So we need to get our lining pieces. And as we did with the exterior, draw the lines around the edge at three eighths of an inch seam allowance so that you've got your little cross crosses on the corners. And you add the exterior panel, the lining panels as before. You stitch to the corners and not past. And you do that with all four panels, doing the main panels first, then the side panels. Then, for stitching the side panels together down here, start at three eighths of an inch seam allowance and then expand to half an inch all the way to the bottom. When you get near to the bottom, move back into a three eighths of an inch seam allowance uh, to tie in at the bottom. Do that with all four edges apart from one of them you want to leave an eight inch gap for turning you can do the bottom if you want to but i just find with the deco being on the bottom 
it's easier to turn it through the sides and stitch it closed afterwards. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'll do that and come back and show you. Um, there we have the lining done with the gap. And the next thing we're going to do is the final construction and we're going to start with the frame channel. Um, so I shall be back shortly with that. Now we're going to create the frame channel. Um, so we get our two pieces and on one of the pieces we mark an inch and three quarter down and draw a line. Then half an inch down from there we draw another line. So you'll end up with that. And then what we do is we put the right sides together of both pieces and we stitch at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance down to the line then we skip to the other side of the line and continue so that you're going to have a little gap there and then we also stitch the other end at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance to create a circle so you stitch both ends together at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance finger press them open and then top stitch either side and that's the sealed end and that's the end no nope, that's the end <laughs> with the gap there so there you have it and now you've got a full circle and fold the um, fabric right, uh, wrong sides together to meet each other and I'm trying to do it without clipping it it's a ridiculous thing to do <laughs> it's not going to stay so just clip them together and we just need to base stitch at quarter of an inch seam allowance or an eighth of an inch seam allowance even just base stitch the two sides together all the way round I'm going to do that and come back. Here we have our frame channel made and you just need to fold it at the seams and mark a line in the centre of the frame channel each side and then measure and mark the centre points of all four panels. Um, because now we're going to line them up and we start by making sure that the gap is facing outwards so that when we fold it up it will be inside and we line it up with the side marking and then hopefully you'll find as you go round your other markings line up match up which this has so far yeah thankfully <laughs> and once we've just done that if you've not made a lining then you need to go to um, stitching the frame channel on at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance but if you've made lining like I have you get your lining and it's wrong side out and you insert the bag exterior side out and obviously your lining's a little bit smaller so it's a little bit snugger make sure your handles are inside and down And then I'm going to line up, it's a bit fiddly to do in, in, on the screen, but I'm going to line up the seams and markings to match the lining and then I'll just pop back to you. Okay, I've gone all the way around and clipped. I mean, you can pin it if you've used fabric like I have, uh, whatever you feel like doing. And I'm going to now stitch at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around. And once I've done that, I'm going to trim the, the excess foam from the seam allowance and turn the bag right side out through the lining. So here she is, turned right side out, um, and the lining inside. 
and now we just need to top stitch around the top just underneath the uh, frame channel so I'm going to go and top stitch that now if you want to know a good way of top stitching uh, to get good results um, take a look at my video tutorial on here on top stitching I think you'll be very happy with uh, how it can help you um, I shall top stitch and I shall come back okay here she is I did stitch inside as well the um, here I stitched the gap closed just wanted to show you that and this is inside the bag I'll just put the lining back down inside inside the bag and outside and all we need to do now is insert the frame so find the gap and just slide it in like so very easy as you can see very easy and then the other side oh dear <laughs> that's it and this frame is the frame by Emmeline Bags uh, just so you know which one I used We can close it like so and off we go <laughs> so yeah I like that that's a nice bag uh, I hopefully look forward to seeing some of yours in the groups happy stitching